Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to the show. Today, we're going to unbox, review, and install the Alpine PWD X5. This is like nothing you've ever seen before. This is a powered subwoofer with a built-in four-channel amplifier. This is an industry first. Let's get this thing open, we'll get it out on the table, and we'll tell you all about it. Inside the box, we have the owner's manual, warranty information. You'll find the first piece of foam, lift up on it and remove. This thing is heavy. It's made out of aluminum. It's not light. You'll know that when you pick up the box and be like, oh wow. Carefully pull this out. Underneath, you'll find a bag of wiring, the Bluetooth dongle that looks like a little USB thumb drive. Put this in your pocket or something so you don't lose it. And your control center. We are gonna take each thing one at a time. Let's talk about this because this, well, this thing is the monster. It has a 25 watt by four amplifier for the output and 165 watt amplifier for this eight inch subwoofer here. On the end of the amplifier, you can see these two USB style inputs, four RCAs, DC off, set or remote turn on as well as the main plug. The external Bluetooth dongle plugs in here. The command center's cable is going to plug in right here. It has four channel RCA inputs. When using those you can select remote turn on but wait and it also has four channels of high level input. So you can either use this high level or low level or you could actually use it as both high level and low level. It gets interesting. We're gonna keep going and we'll explain more as we go. Now what makes this beyond just a five channel amplifier and why it would need a control center is it has 10 bands per channel of parametric equalization. It has digital time correction. It has onboard crossovers, Bluetooth audio streaming and programming through the Bluetooth dongle. So you can connect this to a PC or your smartphone to program it. The size of the unit is 10 inches by 13 and a half by 3.15 inches tall. The eight inch woofer has a flat diaphragm to produce quality low end bass from up underneath your seat. That's where this is designed to go. And it's heavy, as I said, and it's made out of cast aluminum. Power light is located here. When it turns on, it's gonna light up a pretty blue. The command center does multiple things. First and foremost, it's a main volume knob for the system. There's a lot of unique things you can do with this. The Bluetooth dongle, you can pair a phone to it and pass audio, which is one source. You could use this level control for that. You can use the RCA inputs or line inputs. That's another source that can be controlled through here. And lastly, you can control the high level source also. What this means is that we can hook this up to a factory radio via high level. We can also run an aux into this from some form of portable device. We have full access to the aux inputs here, as well as we can stream Bluetooth. You you can use this as a standalone. I mean, you don't even have to hook it up high level into a vehicle. Like if you had a classic car or something that didn't have a radio, any form of a vehicle that you want some bass and some amplification for mids and highs, you can use this for that. It's really unique that way. Most of the time when using an amplifier, you have to choose which source input you're gonna use. With this, you can use all three if you want, or you can just pick one. Other feature that this is gonna be used for is adjusting your preset EQs, as well as your subwoofer volume control. Control. The Bluetooth dongle is made to be plugged into the amplifier here on the end. Keep in mind, wherever it's gonna be putting, it does stick out. You want to make sure that this is in a location that's not going to get kicked or bumped. In the main wiring harness bag, the first bundle you'll find is the extension for the controller. On the controller, there are two USBs as well as this little adapter here. This little adapter is what plugs into your controller and it loops through the USB. This USB is the designed to go up by where this is gonna mount. The other end of the USB will go into the USB remote input on the amplifier. That'll be located next to your Bluetooth. The reason it has this USB located on the end next to the controller is for programming the DSP. There are multiple ways to program it, which we'll talk about in a second. I just wanted to make sure we covered that. It comes with its own roll of 12 gauge power wire. Inside you'll find a 20 amp fuse. There is 
is a small bag that has a bunch of metal pieces and screws. These are gonna be the mounts for the unit. If you flip the unit over, there's these four circles here. This is the mounting bracket system. There's a nipple right here, designed to sit like this and then screw into place. And then you'll be attaching this to a firm mount in the car somewhere. As cool as it would be to just slide this under in the seat and play it, it's not gonna work that way. It needs to couple with the car, meaning you should be able to have this mounted in place and lift it up and down and the car shakes. If this moves at all, you're not gonna get the performance out of it that you're hoping for. You may need to make some brackets or make your own mounting. These are just universal, it's what they give you. The more effort you put into making this a solid mount in the car, the better the base is going to sound. There's four of them in the bag, along with four fine threaded screws for here, and then four coarse screws to screw this down to something. The last piece in the bag is the main wiring harness. It comes nicely covered in the braided loom with some tape and a zip tie on it to hold it all together. It it is about 12 feet long. If you're having to put this, let's say, underneath a back seat or mount it to a rear firewall in a pickup truck, you can. There are three black wires that come to a common ring terminal. This is the ground for the amplifier. There are three yellow wires that come to a filter and then out to the 12 gauge power wire. This is the main power for the system. And then we have 16 speaker wires here, or eight pairs. The reason for that, if we look Look on the end of the amplifier, it's broken into sections. Power input, those three yellow wires we just talked about, and the three black wires we just talked about. Remote in, which we haven't talked about. For our test, we will be using DC offset. We will not need to connect that. Your high level input is going to be your first bank. This first group here is input. Output will be our second group. If we come to the ends of the wires where we're gonna be spending our time, they've labeled them all for us. Out channel two positive, in channel two positive. Pay attention to how they're labeled. It is just taped up in a bundle at the end. Getting this separated to run at high level in our car, we noticed one thing. The output wires here are thicker than the input wires here. That does make it a little bit easier when separating the two bundles apart. Just pay attention to the thickness of the wire. Because this has an EQ, DSP, time correction, all that, we need an app to control it. There's three apps that are available for you depending on how you wanna use it. If you're an Android user, there's one app. If you're an iPhone user, there's another app. And of course, if you're a PC user, there's a third app to allow you control it. To get to that PC app, go to Alpine's website at alpine-usa.com. Type in the PWD-X5 and scroll down to where it starts talking about the product. Convenient sound tuning via a smartphone app is what you're looking for. About halfway down, you'll notice there's a link on the page. If you click it, it'll take you to the support portion of their website, an application software for Windows. Scroll down to where it says PWD-X5.RAR. That's gonna be the software you can download to your Windows machine. I will tell you this, you have to have a .RAR decoder built into your Windows machine. It's not something that's already on there, so you may have to go somewhere and download, let's say, a trial version or something like that. Keep in mind, you don't have to. It doesn't add anything to it that you can't already do from the smartphone apps. Head over to whatever app store your phone supports, type in PWD, and you'll see where it comes up and says X5 series. Scroll down to where it's listed, select download. We've already done that, so we'll select open. There's naturally gonna be some form of disclaimer. Select accept. And that brings us to our main page. On this, we'll have our master volume control clone. It's a redundant of this here. If you don't wanna have this out, you can hide it somewhere. Our subwoofer level control is next to that. On the top, it says source. When tapped, it'll bring open our high level. Source A stands for source aux or line level input. Source Bluetooth. For this, we will be using the high level source. Your presets are located here across the bottom. Tap through. Every time you go to change a preset, it's gonna ask you. This is the basic landing page. Select Pro User. And that's gonna come up with a pop-up that asks us, what's our password? In the owner's manual on page six, user password is 8888. Select Sure. That will unlock it for us. First up is going to be Crossover. If you notice at the top of the page, it's kind of covered by the phone a little bit, but 
but it says FL, FR, RL, RR, and last is sub W. You must select which one you want to use. When on FL, there's a little circle located here at the top. If you tap it, this is our linking. This will allow us to link left and right together. It's gonna ask us, do we wanna copy from left to right or right to left? So if you set up the whole right side and you'd like to mirror it over to the left, you get the idea. Select copy, sure. We can pick our frequency by sliding our finger up and down. Each channel is a band pass. Top is going to be high pass, bottom is gonna be low pass. If you're using it as a front output or a rear output where it's gonna be connected to something that is just going to need a high pass crossover, you don't have to adjust the low pass at all. Simply scroll to where you would like it, stop, select whether you want a six or 12 dB crossover point. If you do wanna use this as a band pass, meaning you want to use channels one and two for tweeters and channel three and four for mid range, you can do that as well. In which case you'd pick the bottom that you would like for your mid bass and then adjust to where you want it to play up to for your tweeter. We pick somewhere around 3200. These would be for mid range. Select front. We can either use this as going off to a set of speakers mid range where we only need a high pass or if we are going to be using it to power a tweeter. Select that same 32. Select your slope 6 or 12. With the crossover setup we can move on to delay. First thing we have is balance and fader. The reason why we have that is because if we are going to be using it as just a Bluetooth piece and or an auxiliary piece only, we may want to have fader control in the car. Move this around anywhere we want. Center will pop up to bring it right back into center. Next is delay. This is gonna be a subtractive delay setting. What that means is measure from your head or your nose or your ear, whichever you prefer, and get the distance to the speaker. Make sure you go to the speaker and not the grill. If the speaker's inset this far apart, add in that extra inch. Once you have all those measurements, for example, if the front speaker is 40 inches, this the front passenger is 56, this is 32, and this is 54. We need to do a subtractive measurement here. 56 is our biggest number. Subtract each one of these from 56 to get what we need to write in to our app. 40 from 56 is gonna give us 16. 32 minus 56 is 24. And 54 minus 56 is two. You will also need your head to the subwoofer to add that in properly. In this case, we'll say our subwoofer is 45 because it's underneath either your driver's seat or your passenger front seat, whichever you're going to be doing. That gives us 11. 56 is just going to be zero. Knowing that information, we can then go back into our app and punch those numbers in. In the top right hand corner, select inches, tap until you get to the desired. You can also press and hold. That gives us our time alignment. We'll move over into EQ located in the bottom right. Looking at the EQ page, we'll notice at the top we have a displayed output going from plus or minus 12 dB. It also indicates where our crossover point is located for that specific channel. This will make sure that you set up your crossover. So for example, if we go to front right and it's different from front left, we need to go back and figure out what we did wrong. Scroll left or scroll right, raise, lower. Tap the number and this will allow us to adjust the Q. Do we want a wide Q? Tap at the top and we can adjust frequency we're trying to. Because it's parametric, we can choose whatever frequency we want. We have 10 bands that we can adjust any way we see fit. If you get into this and you're like, oh my gosh, this sounds terrible, you can select reset EQ and select sure. It's independent for all five channels, but just like setting up the crossover, if you would like to not have to do that, you can select link and now your two channels will be linked together. You go to front right, they will match front left. Rear left and right will also be linked. It will link pairs. This is great to get started, meaning if you hear an overall issue, you can link them, do your major adjustment, hit unlink, and now you can go back and change them so they don't have to stay together. The only problem you run into is if you want to bring them back together, it is going to erase one or the other. If you would just like to hear how it sounds, you can select bypass EQ, select sure, and that's going to turn the EQ off so that you can A, B between EQ, no EQ, select restore, and your EQ will pop back. You may have a problem where let's say a speaker needs to, you need to shift it 180 degrees for either it's hooked up backwards and or it's just not sounding right. Go to output. Here, you can tap between zero and 180 degrees. 
degrees on any one of the channels. If you tap the top, you can also adjust your volume. This is very helpful when setting up time alignment and or the EQ if it's not perfectly centered where you'd like it, you can come in and control the volume that way. If the rears are too loud, you can adjust them here. And the middle is the home page. The next question you might be asking is, hey, I've just spent all this time setting this up. I don't wanna lose this tune. What do I do? Top right hand corner, the three lines, tap them. Share effect, save effect, local effect, recover, import default effect, and about. If you'd just like to make it a preset, press and hold. With a basic understanding of how this is gonna work, let's get this into the car and take a listen to it and actually start turning dials and levers and, and see how this thing actually sounds. For this we'll be installing it underneath the passenger seat using the existing factory radio. The blue power light is not that bright. You don't have to worry about seeing a bunch of blue light coming from underneath your seat. I do recommend mounting it with this way, with this towards the back. That way, if it's going to be kicked or anything, you don't have to worry about them breaking any of the cables, the power harness or anything like that on the other side. Make sure it is far enough back though, so that when the seat is fully moved backwards, with that done, let's hop in and take a listen. Grab your smartphone, and in the top right-hand corner of the app, you'll see a red Bluetooth. Tap that. The PWDX series would like to use Bluetooth. Select OK. It's gonna scan for your device. It'll pop up and say, please select BLD device. In this case, it is the DSP HD. Give it a second to synchronize up. Model selected. When it lights up green in that corner where it was red, that means you're rock and rolling, you're ready to go. Simple way to test that, go to your source, pick the source you're gonna be using. My level, turn your volume up. You should be able to turn the volume up and down from the app. From this point, we wanna add in all our information, our crossover, time alignment and all those things and then we'll come back we'll play with the EQ a little bit get that all dialed in and we'll take a listen wow like I mean, you're, you're, your butt. I, don't, I like here. It's like your butt just must be doing this. Yes. Because it's it's wow. Yeah. It's surprising how this is small. Yeah, I don't even know why we're surprised thing. anymore. You know what well, I mean? Well, you still get surprised. think it was ever made to play that music but it is playing it it is playing it and it's doing it rather well i don't know how long it would do it for this is for a very specific application right. it's 25 watts by four guys 160 watts for a subwoofer an eight inch it's this deep but it is truly impressive i know a lot of our customers in the past some of the gentlemen that come in that would mm -hmm. truly be interested in this i mean we've put some of these amplified subwoofers underneath, underneath the seats before and have that extra 25 watts to fill in the void as well as adding the EQ. I'll admit at first I was playing the role of Fernando here. I was a bit skeptical. I'm definitely impressed. It is good. Like you say, it's for specific applications. But I feel these are becoming more and more common. I mean, I feel we've been testing some very specific application <laughs> things. Don't get me wrong. I still want a big woofer in my car. Oh, I'm not yeah. to that point in my life yet. This Mr. Six and a Half over here. I feel that a lot of people are, and they mm -hmm. just want something to make that factory system sound better and or... And enjoyable. Yeah. I mean, 20 amps current draw, this, yeah, this is pretty cool. Now you throw this one, factory speakers, you have the subwoofer. Not bad, not bad, Alpine, good uh, job, guys. So for those of you that are interested or thinking about getting into one of these little hideaway subwoofers, you might wanna consider this one because it comes with the bonus of adding in the four by 25 watt amplifier, the time alignment, the equalization, the crossover. Dude, you get a full DSP. It has I think this all is the of the first things. one that has a full DSP built into it, eight inch, subwoofer it is as a matter of fact it is it is that's it <laughs> you, you said it guys thank you so much for spending your time with us tonight fernando if you please on to the next one guys you guys have a great night as always we'll see you later next time bye bye, bye.